Welcome back to The Power of Praise. I'm Angela McKenzie, and I'm delighted to introduce to you and have with me as my special guest, my husband, Kenneth McKenzie. Welcome, honey. Hello, dear. It's good to have you with me. We met through mutual friends, and he is from Scotland. So why don't you maybe say something, because everybody seems to love your accent. Well, I'm learning to uh, speak American now, <laughs> seeing I got married to you, my dear. But well, yes, I am from Scotland. And your family as far back as you can... Yeah, from the Highlands of Scotland, uh, as long as I remember, and as long as they knew. That's beautiful. And when we met, we were from two different countries and kind of two different traditions, even in music in church. We both love the Lord and love singing, but I grew up kind of uh, lots of instruments and parts and things. And then when I was visiting your family, beautiful family, especially in some of the churches in the highlands, I walked in and there's no instruments uh, or anything. But boy, when the music started, the room was filled with praise. Tell us about the psalm singing, which probably originated in, in the Highlands. So, in 1650, uh, the history of the psalms was established, and something called the metrical psalms, all 150 psalms in a singable style, was created uh, by something called, called the Westminster Divines. And uh, ever since then, in the Highlands of Scotland, uh, the psalms were primarily what was sung in church uh, until uh, probably the last 100, 150 years. But there's been a long tradition of exclusive psalm singing. Uh, and in fact, in the olden days, they used to even, uh, what they call, put out the line where the presenter, the person who would start the singing, would sing the first line of the verse and then the congregation would follow and then he would sing the second line and the congregation would repeat that when that was at a time when not everybody could read. So a long tradition of psalm singing. And you're right, probably not all of those tunes were re written down, you know, like we would think about writing or sing a chart of songs. It was just past generation to generation in family worship. Yes, and as you know, sometimes at New Year, I still give out the line for my children and grandchildren so that they remember some of the tradition that I was actually brought up with. It was really quite common giving out the line uh, in my youth. Yeah, you call it giving out the line, and we just called it a song leader. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how when you kind of boil everything down, you know, when we love the Lord and we love to sing His praises, we have different traditions and backgrounds. But I've really appreciated getting to know some of the history, and I think some of those metrical psalms and that style probably was the early ideas and format for hymns because a good hymn you know will just have a a set of bars and a tune and then each verse is different kind of like what you would do when you would go down the psalm yeah yeah well i think uh that we should give them a demonstration so earlier in the program i read for you psalm 23 and now we would like to sing for you psalm 23 from the metrical psalm tune the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me Dark me. 
if we were in the Highlands, if you'd like to come with us, come on. When we go visit, you wouldn't have heard the piano. It's all sung a cappella. But when you hear about 100, 150 people, and they are singing this. And it's amazing in this uh, four-part harmony. Four part harmony. Amazing how you begin to develop the ear for harmony uh, when there's, you know, just the voices are, are making the praise. So thank you, Kenneth, for coming on. Uh, he's a businessman, but I dragged him on the set today. And I appreciate you sharing the music of your tradition. Mm -hmm.